Welcome back to Being Sports, Arsene. How are you? I'm well, Richard. Thank you very much. Have the French as a collective recovered <laughs> from World Cup final disappointment? Uh, not really, no. We have still... Uh, uh, this disappointment is still there because we are so close to win it again. And uh, we feel as well that the potential was there to win it again. But uh, credit to Argentina. You know, we have sh seen as well that the World Cup is... a. Uh, those, what is important in the World Cup is to learn faster than other teams. Mm -hmm. And I would give credit uh, to Argentina after having started with a defeat against yeah, Saudi Arabia. Saudi, yeah. They corrected it quickly, well, and uh, uh, they played with a different purpose in the second game. Not only was it a great final, it was a good tournament, wasn't it? It was a great tournament, mm -hmm. certainly. Uh, Personally, I've experienced a, a fantastic tournament because I could travel from one game to the other. Uh, we never see that again. The quality of everything was top. And uh, because uh, I believe that uh, Qatar deserves a lot of credit, mm -hmm. even more so, mm -hmm. because they uh, were criticized a lot, faced adversity before the tournament started, and it was very smooth and uh, with quality until the end of the tournament and uh, with a super final yeah. where you had the two best players certainly in the world at the moment playing against each other and playing at their best level so do you think we'll see a better world cup have they set have they set a new benchmark qatar or did they set a new benchmark with the, with this world cup you would never rule out that uh, you can never mm -hmm. improve but uh, it will be difficult it will be difficult because uh, uh, having spoken to the players as well, mm -hmm. you know, Andy, uh, you know that, that uh, they told me that uh, usually after the game, mm -hmm. they take a flight, mm -hmm. they have to fly home. They arrive at three, four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. they don't sleep the first night. Yeah. The night, uh, when you stay one night in, in, in yeah. their camp, and the, the day, two days before the next game, they fly, they fly again. again. So, could have, uh, the question you ask, could have a messy play the same tournament That's true. Yep. if you had to go through that regime mm. that uh, for the whole tournament I'm not sure. Right. Well, yeah. Can I ask you a quick question on the final? You say <coughs> the French are disappointed. What, are you disappointed not just in not winning it but in the performance for 70 minutes that wasn't good enough really? Yeah, but we Is were disappointed worse? by the performance for 70 minutes and uh, I feel that uh, in the last 20 minutes we took more over physically, right. you know and uh, uh, the Argentinian defence uh, could not fight anymore with our pace and mm -hmm. then we took slowly over. But they found the resources <laughs> again <laughs> uh, to score the 3-2. Yeah. You know, that was the miracle on the night. And uh, overall, uh, you would say that uh, Martinez on the night and mm -hmm. Messi on one the other side of the field <laughs> made that difference. <laughs> And they've turned Messi's bedroom into a museum, incidentally, <laughs> here in Canada, if anyone's interested. Fantastic. Uh, did you enjoy your visit to the Emirates? Yes. I Why enjoyed my visit to, to the Emirates back? because I wanted to take my family one day there. And uh, uh, I think it's the end of a chapter, you know, that uh, I have to come back. And I was happy to see the players in the dressing room after. It was mixed feelings because you've, you go to a place... I, I did sweat to build this yes. stadium, Richard, yes. for 10, 12 years, you know, for every penny. And uh, so it was a good feeling to see what it is now and uh, the crowd happy, the team is doing well. And as well, you realize there's something, part of your life is over mm -hmm. and forever. So it's a bit mixed uh, feeling. Why, why now? Why, why, put mm. that another way. Why did you leave it so long? Were you hurting? And do you feel because better as a result? Because I felt at the start it was a good to take a distance with it and not sit there and straight away be a weight for the guy who is yeah, working there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, today it's all different and I felt it was the right moment to wait for longer would not be right. Uh, the timing for me was maybe a fraction late but it was, it was good. Just on Christmas as well, so it was, was nice. And, uh, Did you like what you saw? We, yeah. know, we know the Arsenal you built, many Arsenal, not just yeah, one, yeah, yeah. you know, but did you like what you saw? Did you I, like I, what they're I evolving like, into? Uh, I like what I saw, not only Andy, and I like what I felt in the dressing room. Okay. Because what, I feel, team spirit, you mean, togetherness? I feel the, the team spirit is great, 
the humility, the hunger of the young players is absolutely amazing. And uh, they're humble, uh, they're hungry, and uh, they're Are they good enough? Are they good enough? They are good enough. They are good enough. There, there's always a period when you have not won, mm -hmm. a period of t that where the tension yeah. comes in. Like now. Like now. <laughs> and uh, where you have to deal with it, you know, and get over. over. So maybe it's not bad now to play a team like City where you have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not super favourite against Brentford. You are, that's where the tension creeps in. But now uh, comes City, it's a good opportunity. But it's as well now an opportunity that you can't miss. No, absolutely. Can they win it? Yes. Will they win it? <laughs> I would say yes, because uh, I feel uh, the usual threats in the Premier League are all out of the race. <laughs> and uh, that the only threat is City. And even City is not as uh, dominant as they were uh, last year or two years before. And I feel uh, since the start of the season, City uh, was more vulnerable defensively than they were yeah. uh, the years before. Can I ask you a question about City? About let's. I want to talk, mention Erling Haaland, right? Mm -hmm. his, his numbers as an individual are sensational. Yeah? yeah. His goal return, mm -hmm. amazing. But, and I say but, there has been, and we've debated it, Richard and I, many times, there's a, a school of thought that he makes Manchester City a poorer team, that they were a better team without him. Uh, poor How, is maybe you, a big word. Uh, it makes Man Manchester City a different, a different team. team. A different team. Why? Because now, uh, with Haaland, they win the ball a little bit less quickly back. Mm -hmm. And when they win the ball, they go more quickly to find him. So before, they were a bit more patient mm -hmm. with the position uh, interchanging. And uh, the combination game was maybe more patient and shorter. Mm -hmm and uh, technically different. Today, they rely more on crosses, on direct play with Haaland. And uh, it is always, we speak about uh, City, mm -hmm. you could have the same conversation with Liverpool. Yeah. You know? But uh, would you have Haaland in your team? If I offered you Haaland and you were coach, would you have Haaland yeah, in your team? You never rule out the player who can score 30 or 40 <laughs> goals. But uh, uh, it is the, the perpetual problem of the manager. You have a good team, you know your job is to increase the, team, mm -hmm. the quality of mm -hmm. the team. So if you have, a, for example, Liverpool had a very, very effective midfield to win the ball back and find their strikers very quickly. I remember the average time of Liverpool winning the ball back was 14 seconds. I bet you it's not that now. It's not that now. <laughs> so, but uh, when, when you uh, have a coach, you, at the end of the season, you think maybe I have to improve a little bit the technical level of the team. Mm -hmm. And you bring something in and you take something away. Mm -hmm. And uh, that to fi keep that balance right is absolutely uh, uh, always a So problem. if Arsenal win the title, is it devalued by the fact there was no credible challenge? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I feel that... Uh, you win, you win it when you can win it, yes. you know, and you don't care too much about all the rest. You let other <laughs> people talk and you take the title. So personally, I believe that uh, it isn't where I agree with you. Maybe the conditions next year will not be as favorable as they are now. So let's not miss this opportunity. But surely that's not Arsenal's problem. Arsenal's problem is to win it if they can. And if the others aren't up to speed, then yeah, yeah great for Arsenal. Problem. Arsenal has today 51 points, what is uh, remarkable mm -hmm. after 22 games, I think. Controversy this weekend, Arsenal, not least, of course, at Arsenal. Um, as an advocate, as one of the prime movers for technology, mm -hmm. um, did you pause this weekend and think, well, perhaps we were better off without it? Or <laughs> are we... Yeah, no, are we, yeah, we know. That's, uh, Sorry, that's, we know. Are we moving to a place... objectivity of Richard Keyes. You know, he finds one... Yeah. one oh, of course he does. In, I haven't finished the question yet. <laughs> or are we shy of embracing the technology that you gave us at the World Cup that actually, when it came to deciding... And listen, whether we want to be looking to disallow goals as consistently as we do and as... As excited as, as we do, or as forensically as we do, that's yeah. another matter. But should we be moving to use the technology that, that we had at the World Cup to make sure offside genuinely 
is offside. Yes. We have to use the technology as sophisticated and as accurate as we can. But uh, where you, where I a little bit on your side, Richard, is a, a question we have to answer now is uh, the modern technology, the artificial intelligence uh, allows us to go further and uh, to measure absolutely everything. And we have to decide how far do we go. Yeah. Are we, you happy with when a goal is disallowed for two centimeters offside, Asa? I, I, I'm not happy, but the, accu the accuracy goes against, uh, before we said uh, Advantage to benefit the of a doubt yes. from a strike. That has gone. I see. But uh, how far do we go then? I believe uh, we have to keep uh, sport human, and uh, Good. we Good could job. measure. We could measure today the pressure I put on the shoulders of Andy if I fight against him, and say, okay, but my push was 15 kilos or 17 <laughs> no, kilos. No, can do it. Please, no arson. No, <laughs> it's possible. Well, I know, but no. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you have to create even more rules. Is it a free kick with 15 uh, kilos or <laughs> 20 kilos, you know? So we have to keep it, the, the spirit of a game yes. has to to. You prevent. use the great word there, human. Mm. Don't dehumanise it, no. Yeah. But we should, you think, in the Premier League now, in, I think in Italy they are now working with the technology that you gave us at this World Cup. You think the sooner the Premier League embraces that, the better? I hope so, yes. Yeah. I think so. Okay. But, uh, in England, we are always a bit sometimes in advance and sometimes uh, behind, you know. Uh, England, uh, what I liked always in England is that is a country that is a huge respect for the tradition, but they are not uh, scared as well to mm -hmm. move forward. Yeah. Sometimes at a different pace, sometimes they move much quicker forward than others. And uh, sometimes as well, they have uh, uh, debates where are not as... Uh, needed as they are at the moment, for example, a concussion problem, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't deny that the concussion have to be taken seriously, but uh, with five substitutes, knowing that uh, the last two substitutes most of the time come in at 82, 83 minutes, mm -hmm. that means uh, only a risk of seven minutes to yeah. play with one player less in extreme mm -hmm. cases. So, Are you moment, an advocate of concussion substitutes in, in, in the literal sense that you can take one player out for 10 minutes to assess damage and replace him with another and make that change again at the end of a 10 no. minute period, you're not? I'm uh, completely against it. Let, let's take the, the, the World Cup final. Mm -hmm. It's 2-2. Two -two. You have Benzema on the bench at 2-2. Two -two. You have a guy, a defensive midfielder, who has a risk of concussion. He comes out, Benzema comes in for mm -hmm. him. He scores the 3 2. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and after, comes out again. after the assessment of a guy, finally he's all right. And he comes out. He comes in again to defend the 3 2, and Benzana <laughs> comes out again. Would that be a coincidence, no. or are you suggesting that coaches might manipulate the opportunity? That's a risk. At least you have not to create opportunities for them to, mm. to use the rules in yeah. their advantage. Yeah. Yeah. How does the Manchester City saga end? How should it, in your view? Well, you have to give them a right to defend uh, their case. I believe that uh, they have been accused by uh, the Premier League mm -hmm. and that uh, on what I know, this case will last two years. So immediately, nothing will happen. Is that good for the game, that it lasts two years? No, it's it? not good for the game. But uh, it raises another question, uh, Andy. Uh, is the question of how efficient is the financial fair play? Is it? No, not in my Can opinion. Can it be? That's a good, good uh, question because personally I feel as well that all uh, with so much money wanting to go into football mm -hmm. today to invest in the game, should we not allow at least for a period of time for the first three or four or five years for people who want to come in to invest money as much as they want and after uh, come to a period of stabilization. If that doesn't happen, you will always have the same hierarchy. For example, if we buy Burnley tomorrow mm -hmm. and uh, 
we cannot invest money, we can never make of Burnley and Man United. Have you suggested that to the powers that be, Arsene? No, because I, I, I uh, wonder as well. The second thing uh, that comes to my mind as well, should we not exclude completely the commercial income and only consider for the financial fair play uh, the gates and the television money? And the third, third part of a commercial where the, the case is of Man City mm -hmm. is, is uh, not the television money because you can control. The gates you can control. The commercial money is much more difficult to control, you know, because it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. And uh, should we not exclude uh, the commercial rights? Uh, uh, bigger brains than myself uh, have to sit around the table and uh, sort that out. Mm -hmm. There aren't many more. Um, it's speculative, I know, but if Manchester City are ultimately convicted of some, maybe all, of the 115 charges, should they be, A, stripped of trophies and titles that they won during that period, and in your view, should they be relegated from the Premier League? Look, uh, there are rules in the Premier League that I don't know precisely because I was more on the technical side. I don't know uh, if uh, there are precise rules in the rule book about that, uh, I haven't looked at that. But as someone who competed against them and was public in your criticism of them during that period of time, Look, uh, would it frustrate I, you I, that, that uh, they Richard, perhaps Richard, have manipulated? Richard, I was in this case where I had to fight with no money against the teams with unlimited resources. You know, So I know well uh, what it is to be in that position. And uh, I uh, just felt, you know, you have in every club to work uh, with your resources and try to do the best you can with the resources you have yourself. After, it's a problem of the league, of the Premier League, to decide uh, the rules. They installed the financial fair play. That is not perfect. I agree completely on that. And uh, uh, will people with unlimited resources who come today in the game accept that uh, they cannot invest money? I don't believe that. You know, no. What is the interest of buying a football club? But there are two club? ways of yeah. investing, aren't there? Hmm? The Sorry? right way, there are two ways of investing that money, the right way and the wrong way. Would it surprise you if Manchester City were ultimately found guilty of the charges that they face and if they were relegated, would that be punishment enough? I uh, don't know. Uh, I believe that uh, at the moment, I know quite well Khaldun. I'm rather thinking he's an intelligent man. Mm -hmm and uh, an honest man, so I'm, I was quite surprised by the charges they face. So let's see how the, uh, the outcome of uh, Is there of a chance, case. do you if think? If they are found guilty, they will face penalties, and yes. uh, I don't know well what the penalties will be. But do you think there is a chance they might face a sanction of being relegated and stripped of titles? Very small one. Very small? I think so. If they were stripped of trophies that they'd won, should those that finished second or as runners-up receive the prize? Not really, because uh, maybe uh, you could have a, a team who finished second who has beaten that uh, uh, season uh, Man City, so they were not punished by the fact that they made results, and the team who finished third Mm. has lost against Man City, <laughs> so they could argue as well, we have a case yeah. to finish. He's good, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's so, good. So, so, <laughs> finish in front of yeah, good. <laughs> Let me try one more time. Yeah. So, so what we're saying is whatever was won should... Should it go to somebody else? No. No. I no, agree. because uh, we had that case. For, uh, when you haven't won, you haven't won. No. You know. So, okay, and, so, uh, so the punishment well. would have to be something that, that, that might, for instance, see them relegated from the Premier League? And, and would, would, would that be sanction enough in your view? I don't know the rules, Richard. <laughs> I told you three times now. He's good. He's, you, you, he's, you, he's if terrible, you want Man City to be relegated, it's your problem. <laughs> but, uh, I think he knows it. He doesn't know the rules. <laughs> no, it's he, like, did you see that sending off? I said, no, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that, no. But uh, what I mean, there's a punishment yeah. certainly planned in the Premier League. But uh, I give you a clear answer on my opinion. Again, uh, the, second, the team who finished second should not be champion instead of Man City. No, I think we all agree with when, that. Uh, 
Bjorn de Guillaume. Those that, guys that competed when, uh, for those Lance prizes Armstrong did so honestly they did. and, they and did. Should, should not be sanctioned, no. should not no. in any way be punished. Can I finish on a football note? Yes. Can I ask you a question about Liverpool, who we're going to watch tonight? Just, I know I'm not going to, but I want to ask you. In your 21 years at Arsenal? 22 22 years. 22 years at Arsenal. Excuse me, Arsenal. In your 22 years at Arsenal, were you ever in the situation that Jurgen Klopp finds himself in? A team flying, winning titles, competing with everything, suddenly losing it in, in February, being mid-table and not looking like you're going to challenge for anything. How, did you ever find yourself anywhere like that? No, not in that extreme. Uh, Liverpool, uh, not so long ago, was uh, running for four trophies mm -hmm. one year ago, and it's uh, spectacular how they have... Do you uh, have an answer for that? Is there one? I, I, uh, I certainly believe that there are many answers in there. There's never one answer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, of course, the staff and uh, Jürgen Klopp has to find the answer. And uh, when you live every day with the players, uh, you have to find the key mm -hmm. to, to make that start again. And uh, honestly, uh, the home record is not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost only one game at mm -hmm. home, but it's away, uh, they lost uh, their way away from home, where they were usually solid, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, uh, Six away defeats, yeah. Six. In, in fairness, it's a fascinating race for ninth between Liverpool and big spending Chelsea. <laughs> no, uh, look, I, I was thinking tonight, uh, <laughs> Liverpool is a real football city. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when uh, Liverpool or Everton loses a football game, the city is hurt. Mm. And uh, when you see that uh, since the start of the season, uh, the two teams together have won 12 games, mm. four, eight and four. Yeah. So the, it, it was, at the moment, this city is certainly not happy, and uh, tonight is an important game. But what is for sure, Andy, and uh, there's two things that are, for me, uh, show the strength of the Premier League. Liverpool is tonight uh, ninth in the league. Mm -hmm. They play against Real Madrid in the Champions mm -hmm. League, but still 50-50. You think so? I, I think so. Okay. They're still 50-50. That shows you the strength of the Premier League. And uh, uh, the second thing, when you play in a league and there's a, the bigger the gap is between where you want it to be mm -hmm. and where you are, the more difficult it is to build the motivation of the players. Really? Okay. Mm. Because the players don't know anymore, what do we go for? No, what do we do? Yeah. Uh, Arsene, thank you for spending time with us. Yeah, you thank you, you have some reading up to do on the rules and the regulations. Yes. Of the Premier League. <laughs> thank you for insisting so much. Yes. Yeah. Brilliantly dodged, Arsene. Brilliantly dodged. <laughs>